podcast. He sold a fit. Oh, that's your fucking starter? That was weird, right? <laughs> Spazzing out by the work fucking thing. It was almost like he was at a Motley Crue concert, right? He was like fucking kind of, yeah. I don't know. He was raging for sure. Julian Marquez, first time in the studio, in the new studio. It's a new one. It's nice. I like it. You don't call. You don't write. Actually, I do fuck? write. I do write. You only write. I actually sent a message to you by owl. I don't know if you've gotten it yet. By owl? Yeah, dude. Harry Potter style. I just <laughs> tried to communicate to you to the mystical arts. Right. You know, no, but, I didn't get that one yet. Oh, uh, just trying to figure out why you didn't answer my call. So it mm. makes sense. Okay. All right. And then I got Steve Sanders. He's looking like, what are these two talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for coming. For Amazing. Sure, this is my first. So uh, right. Virgin. First um, podcast ever. Ever. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. And we get the honor. Yeah, it's I amazing. Guess, I guess you do. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad so, to be your first. Right? <laughs> Popped your podcast cherry with us. I like it. Julian Marquez, you've you've listened to the show before. You're well aware. UFC fighter, podcaster, entrepreneur, motivational speaker. You're actually all of those things. I do a lot of things, I guess. Yeah. So I'm happy for it. Yeah. yeah. Just trying Every, to be like you, man. No, you you passed me. No, not yeah. yet. Pro athlete, you passed me with that, dude. That's hot. Touche. But look at your room, your podcast room. This I'm growing. Amazing. You got this awesome little chest over here. I don't know. It's like a Halloween chest. I don't know. It's well, super no. scary, but it's, it's awesome. funny. I'll tell you what that is. Steve, do you know what that is? No, I don't. I, I'm no shocked idea. you don't know what that is. Because that's actually sent to me from the guys at Call of Duty. Oh, is that right? Yes, okay. sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah, so I should tell uh, looks our, very dark. our folks listening <laughs> that Steve Sanders is a, I don't want to mess this up. Are you an active, not that it matters, but are you an active SEAL? Or what's no, the I'm proper, retired. You're a retired, I'm retired. Yeah, I'm retired. SEAL. Yep. Uh, very, very decorated SEAL, I should say. And now you probably do many things, which we're going to hear about, but one of the things I know you do is you're a consultant for Call of Duty. I am. And yep. the new one comes out this week. It comes out tomorrow. As a matter of fact, it comes out tonight at midnight is the release. Okay. So yep. by the time they hear this, maybe a day or two ago, yep. it's out. Very cool, yeah. man. So how did that all come up? Tell us. Tell us about you. Wow. Okay. Well, how deep you want me to go? <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so let's start with uh, the SEAL years. Uh, how long were you a SEAL? So, yeah, I'll give you the uh, Reader Digest version. Yeah. Um, so I've spent 24 years as a SEAL. I retired back in 2013, so I joined right out of high school. Um, yeah, did 24 years, did uh, 10 combat deployments overseas, um, specialized in many specific disciplines and inside the SEAL teams, and... Started my business about 2010, and um, right before I got out, and yeah, it's kind of just, you know, went from there. So I've got, uh, I actually started Tier 1 Global in 2010, and then my business partner and I, uh, Mitch Hall, started up Six Shooters, Inc. Um, three years ago. So we, that uh, that company deals in the entertainment space, so film, TV, video games, obviously. So as a consultant, of exactly what it's like. Exactly. So we what we do is we bring in all the authenticity to whatever the project is, whether it's again TV, film, or video games. So you know we come in as consultants and we work in usually we're working almost all the venues of in all the departments. So from script writing to working with the stunt guys or. Um, just this, you know, virtually everything, especially for Call of Duty, you can imagine there's so many, you know, basically head to toe from all the characters, the script, the narrative, all that stuff. So it's very, like this game that's about to be released tomorrow, three years in the making. So that's been insane. A, it's yeah, been right? a long project and um, it's, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I, great. in another life, I had a PR firm, and we somehow ended up working with Call of Duty with Infinity Ward, mm -hmm. uh, which is the maker of this current game that's mm -hmm. coming out. 
uh, and we did all their launch parties for a few years in a row, um, East Coast and West Coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, my buddy John Raffis, who used to work for Activision, but now he's over at Treyarch, which is the other company. Yep. Uh, I know they're, you know, there's, yeah, there's yeah, uh, familiar, you know, yeah. friendly rivalry, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun because I, it's the literally the only video game I play besides like baseball. I like baseball video b games, but um, yeah. Call of Duty, I was like addicted to the point where I had to put it down. Like I had to stop. Yeah, it could definitely get addicting for sure. Do you actually play? I do. So I actually started playing after we kind of got in the business um, of consulting for video games. So because you have to. Exactly. I mean, you have to kind of get in there and see what it's like and have the, you know, that POV from the player. You know, um, going through the game and what they experience and what they get out of it. So, Julian, do you play? You play Call of Duty? Oh my God, I don't. Like I had to, I had to literally unplug my <laughs> Xbox, <laughs> so like I don't have an HDMI cable anymore. Like I, I took it out and threw it away. Really? Because it was like bad. recently, dude. It was so bad. <laughs> so I don't know if you know this, but like when Call of Duty came out, it was like one of the biggest things. So like my friends and I, like that was I was in high school, so my friends and I had a clan. We had it the whole nine yards, and uh, at one point in time, my friends, I wasn't part of this clan, but they were ranked in the top fifteen in the world. Um, their clan was so, like we played all the time and sometimes I'll substitute in their their games and just help out whenever one person couldn't make it but uh, I We played religiously like I had over Man, I probably had over a hundred days Just accumulated on the first game we had which was uh, at the time it was Call of Duty um, what Was it Call of Duty 4? Mm -hmm. So we played forever on that with the golden shotgun i'm telling you we went all in so then they started coming more and more and they started adding up you know a black ops and all this stuff and the zombies so we're just i kept playing and uh when they remastered it again when they remastered four it was over man i i, I just now got signed with the ufc and i said all i did was play call of duty and train and at the time whenever this came out do you guys remember uh they always do the like call of duty was match up with a drink so like mountain dew mountain dew came out with game fuel do you remember that at all no mm, i don't know so that yeah, most people i'm like, new so, to the gaming world so mountain dew would team up with a game it could be like uh wow like world of warcraft when they would come out mountain dew would have game fuel out and call of duty when it came out the uh when they did the remastered they ended up partnering with them and it was call of duty um gamer fuel and it was an orange citrus flavor which they don't have this I anymore i do remember that but it was like literally straight up gamer food. There's so much sugar in it. So I literally, I kid you not, me and my roommate, we played, we literally play eight hours a day. Yeah. And we'll eat and drink. We'll eat uh, white chocolate fudge Oreo cookies, you know, the Christmas edition, <laughs> yeah. where they cover that. And then we'll just. This is a pro athlete. Yeah, yeah. And we'll just drink all. All of the gamer fuel, like we would literally buy cases at a time. We'll have like seven or eight within the hour and just keep chugging down this stuff and playing the game. We played prop hunt. We played, um, I don't know, headquarters, whatever you name it. And it got to the point where I was like, yo, I got to make 85 and I got to have like, I got to stop. Like I got to lose some weight on this. So I had to cut it all off. And since that day that I walked away from it, uh, they haven't, they haven't teamed up with Mountain Dew. And I, I, if you can throw in a word for Mountain Dew to come out with Gamer Fuel again, <laughs> the citrus cherry, like I need that back. Right? You need that life. back in your life? Like I won't have another soda again unless it's that. Really? Wow. I haven't had a soda. I'm a Mountain Dew guy too. I know. It's a, if you have this, it's the best. Every one of my friends are Mountain Dew fans, and every time I gave it to them, they were just they were hooked instantly. It's the best flavor of Mountain Dew ever, and they stopped making it. Well, it was a heartbreak. Can you help out? Can you do anything, Steve? Can, yeah, you, you got I don't any, know. You got any I juice? Know. I haven't no? gotten the phone call yet. Oh. All right. <laughs> that's that's all my life's about right now, to make that gamer fuel happen. <laughs> I'm going after you, Mountain Dew. Dig right? down deep for the recipe. Yeah. yeah. So when you were a SEAL, I mean, I, I did a very little homework on you. First of all, I didn't even know who you were until about four days ago. Mm -hmm. um, my friend, my new friend, Stan King, mm -hmm. uh, lives right next door to my dentist. Uh, Dr. Steve Kim and Hollywood Smile, mm -hmm. and uh, I was at uh, Dr. Kim's baby shower for his wife this past Saturday, and uh, Stan was was telling me, uh, asking me, you know, what do you do, John? Da -da -da. And I'm like, oh, podcast, whatever. He's like, oh, I got some friends for you. And so Viking Mike, who you just saw mm -hmm. uh, leave leave here, uh, he sent me Viking Mike, and then he, you know, he was like, you got to have Steve Sanders on. He's a SEAL, and you, you had me at SEAL because I'm fascinated with 
that whole a what it takes to become the dedication and just what mm -hmm. you guys have to go through in training and then obviously the actual work that mm -hmm. you do is is it's it's hard to get your head wrapped around it as a civilian uh, because I think because we we become so desensitized from video games and and movies exactly, yeah. and everything and like what the actual work is and what you're doing um, and a how noble it is and then b how fucking dangerous it is like I don't know if people really get it like. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's that's probably one of the biggest things. What you just described uh, is the consequences, and you know, we went through several interviews just talking about the game. We were doing some marketing stuff over in London, and you know, people were like, "Well, how do you think? How do you think this relates to what you did for real?" And I said, "Well, it doesn't at all because <laughs> there's no consequences, and obviously, the consequences for messing up when you're doing it for real is death. Right? right. You're gonna you're gonna die." So. Um, the video games, it's just a game. It's there for entertainment value, and, and that's it. So Actually, the consequence, if you mess up or do it right, is death most of the time, right? Uh, well, yeah, you really never know. Death on the other side. I exactly. Yeah. Right. It, it, exactly. At the end of the day, it's it's one or the other, for right. sure. Yeah. Some of the stuff, I mean, you probably can't give us too many details on, like, what you've done, what you've seen, but um, what can you tell us? Like, like I mean... Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, not to go too deep, but, uh, I mean, we, I did this stuff for 10 years, going to combat for 10 years. And, um, when I showed up at the command, um, that I can't mention, mm -hmm. um, but if you do your homework, you'll know what it is. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, we just, we, we were nonstop, you know, we we're, um, hitting targets um, two, three times a week. So it's literally over 10 years, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of operations. And, um, yeah, I, I literally, I was addicted to it. Really? It was, yeah. It was like a, it was like a drug. Um, and when I got, was on deployment, I just was so consumed with the work. I just, I loved it. And, um, you know, at times it's like, I didn't really want to leave. I didn't want to go home. You know, as hard as it is to say that or for my kids to hear that, um, it was true. You know, I was just addicted to the work. I have another friend that that was a SEAL. Uh, I forget what team he, he was on, but I was asking him once what it was like, and he said a lot of it is like playing video games. A lot of it is, I guess, dropping, and correct me if I screw this up, but like dropping bombs on certain targets, and it's literally like playing video games in, in a room. Is that is that accurate in That's some That's accurate some if, you're, if you're flying, if you're a drone pilot. Okay. You know, if you're a drone pilot and you're actually looking at a video screen and you're actually flying the, you know, the drone remotely, and um, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it's like. Or if you're in an AC-130, um, a gunship, you know, you're in the back and you're literally moving the cursor around and hitting the button, and you know, the bullets fly out. That that part of it is definitely very video game-ish for sure. Um, on the ground is not. And I'm guessing the combat you saw is on the ground, just from the way you're talking. All, yeah, all on the ground. All yeah. On the ground, so yeah. like. When I play the video game, and I'm just doing this because I get addicted to the video game, and you're saying that you were addicted to it, like that was your passion, that's what you put all your life in, and coming from my background and, and training and stuff, like I know the feeling of going all in and just training and losing yourself inside of training, but like what was your, how did you deal with it with sleep? Because obviously you have a lot more going on out there, um, there's a lot more you know, different things out there to keep you up at night. Like, were you able to, to sleep, or would you go on days at a time without sleep? Or it depended. I mean, we so we were um, we operated at night only, so we were basically nocturnal. So we would operate, you know, we'd do an operation. It'd be from you know the time it got dark till you know sunset. So and then we'd have to be kind of we'd be off the battlefield by the time the sun came up. So one cycle of darkness, we'd be in and out into our thing. But there were times where. We'd be in the field for a handful of days, probably the longest I ever did. And this is early on in the war. It was seven days in the field. And this is when I was in a, a sniper um, element. Um, we spent some time up in the mountains. But other than that, you know, we were in and out. But, yeah, guys struggled with um, with sleep. Um, but typically over that cycle of darkness when we were out operating, by the time you got back and had breakfast, I mean, you were done. You know, maybe a couple cocktails and then, um, you know, you're done. You so. nothing kept you like you. You didn't no, struggle to fall no, asleep. No, I didn't. You I, didn't just out. I didn't lose any sleep over 
over the job at all, never. Oh, mm. wow, man. No. I would think that, like, being out there, you're in the middle of no. nowhere in a different terrain that you've never been at, hot, cold, whatever it may be, just and all the, the adrenaline that you have going into what you're doing, like, thinking that, like, you're just constantly thinking about, all right, what we're doing tomorrow, let me plan out tomorrow, let me just break it down, let me do the analytics of this, that, and the other, this is how we're going to go in and get this. Yeah, I mean, part of that is true. Like, we'd come back off, you know, some up, and um, especially if it was pretty hot, you know, we'd come back and, you know, you're pretty high from it. You know, you got that adrenaline flowing, and it'd usually take, you know, two, three hours to kind of come off it and sit down and, you know, mellow out and refocus and, you know, talk to your team. Um, I was a team leader and just kind of go over – Go over the nights, you know, lessons learned, this and that, and then, um, yeah, call it good. But it's like anything, you know, if you do something over and over and over, it becomes, you know, very routine. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's just part, it's like any job, you know, you go out and you do it, and you put the put the bad stuff away in the back, you know, mm -hmm. keep it down. And mm -hmm. uh, other than that, just... Scary? Um, you know, or no time for scary. Kind of no, like what you do. Right? No time for scary. Yeah, I did. I, you just like he said. The more and more you do it, the less and less it's scared. Like within my situation, when I step in the octagon, knowing that I'm going to fight for would like fight against somebody, I've been mentally preparing myself forever. Like that. That's the fun part. The scary part is the entire camp. Right. You know what I mean? Because all these different type of things you can't control. Right. Your lack of food. Your sleep patterns. Your just how tired you're going to get, whatever random obstacle. For that 15 minutes that I'm in the octagon, if it takes that long, everything's right. Everything's going, it feels great. It feels like this is where I need to be. That's all my life has been working forward to was that moment, those 15 minutes, and everything shuts off. I don't think about what I left on the stove. I don't think about what I'm eating that night. I don't think about if my brother is doing okay in Kansas City. I don't think about none of that. All I think about is what I need to get done at that moment, at that time, and that's all that's going through my mind. And then reacting to the live actual punches, right. kicks, or whatever may be thrown at me, and just, that's all, it feels natural, it feels Yeah, perfect. I would say absolutely what you just said is 100% I'd agree with. I mean, from the time we would step off the helicopter or whatever platform we used to infill, I mean, it'd be complete focus, and I wouldn't think, I wouldn't think about anything. As a matter of fact, that was my favorite part. Um, we would have a point where we'd stop before we were moving into target and we'd call it moving to set. And that was my favorite part because it was just nothing. You're just like totally focused. There's no, there's no fear. There's no anxiety. There's nothing. You're just like in the moment and that's what you're there to do. You're there to but, do your job. And it's like, you know, it's, that was absolutely my favorite part of it. Even though knowing the con like his consequence is different. If it goes, if he has a bad night, he has a bad night. His worst case scenario is, and I'm not, I'm not belittling what you do. You know that, uh, you know, he gets knocked out, let's say, or choked out, whatever. Mm. He lives to fight another day still. Mm. In your case, not the case. So isn't that? No, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't even, you know, it, I think over time, you know, when you're doing stuff so much over and over in the training environment, yeah, you know, you're training, you're training your ass off, you're. You know, you basically, you're just doing it over and over and over, and it's so routine and it's so normal. So when you get thrown into a real environment, it's almost kind of like, it's almost as if you're in still in the training mode, even though you know. I mean, we all know, like, okay, these guys are really shooting real guns at us. And right. There's live grenades and so on and so forth. So, um, but no, I never really got to the point where I was just, I just, I was just focused. Even I mean, just first, focused. first mission? Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. Yeah. That's wild. Uh, so, like, one of the first times uh, fighting and actually competing um, and starting getting good at it, like when I would go in there in my amateur ranks, I was completely. I, I didn't perform the same way I performed in the gym until someone told me. I think it was Tim Elliott. I was in uh, Kearney, Nebraska, fighting on RFA at the time, and he said, "Hey, man, this is nothing but practice. Literally, it's nothing but practice." And then right there is a click that I was like, oh, shit, like this is what I do every day, this everything. Mm -hmm. And then when I walked into that fight, I did everything the same as I would be in practice. Like I, I trained for it. That finally clicked for me to actually know how to pace myself, how to push stuff. Like, Because I think during the time, like in my – like when I look at it, during that camp, you think about all the possibilities. The same possibilities that you're thinking out right now. Oh, like if you have a bad night, it could end wrong for you if you have this. That doesn't 
fall into your head. You're not sitting there thinking like, oh, man, I'm going to go out there and infiltrate this location, get what I need to get the information out of, and then possibly might get shot. Like, I don't think you think that. And I, I could be wrong, but you don't think that. You think like, hey, I got to go in here and get this stuff. That's it. And then when the job's done, what's done? If you start thinking about all this other stuff, then you start forgetting what you did in training. You start worrying about what everybody else is doing instead of what you can control is yourself. And that's what helps me get through all that. That's why that 15 minutes when I'm in that octagon, it's 100% complete focus. Like as if I, that that's the drug that everybody wants. Mm -hmm. You know, you take Adderall to focus to try to read a book or to pay attention in class. But that drug, whatever that is in that 15 minutes, I've never been so focused in my life and so calm at the same time. And I've so prepared for that 15 minutes where I feel like that's where I belong. You're Absolutely. shaking your head. Yep. Yeah. I totally I couldn't agree more. And no. for you, though, the 15 minutes could be eight hours, right? Could be 12 hours, could, it be, could be 36 be hours. Entire, yeah, it could be an entire cycle of darkness. So it could be typically, you know, we're in and out in sometimes as short as an hour and a half, sometimes it'd drag on six, seven hours. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, you go in there and it's, you're just so focused. A lot of time, that time frame doesn't really, you don't really even pay attention to it because even if it's an hour or four hours, you really don't even know because you're so into what you're doing, the time just goes right, flies right past you. You know, next thing you know, you're like, holy shit, we've been here that long? And you don't even, you don't even realize it. Does your, uh, when, when you were in like any situation that you're in, did time slow down for you? Did it feel like time would go by super slow? There was a few, yeah, there was a few occasions where things kind of went in slow motion and it was usually something that was happening very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, um, but yeah, that, it, that happened a few times, not every time, but a few. That was probably the, like, that's probably the coolest feeling I think like, Looking back on scenarios that I am in the octagon, I feel like if you ever seen uh, Spider Man, like the first one with Tobey Maguire, where the bully <laughs> throws the punch at his face and he just kind of leans sideways and just starts looking right. at the fist, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it feels like inside the octagon. Like time would slow down to where I feel like I'm the fastest person I've ever been. I feel like I'm the smartest person I've ever been. I feel like everything is moving. One second is literally 30 seconds. 30 seconds is literally two minutes. Two minutes is literally a half an hour. You know, it, yeah. it takes forever, but I feel like everything slows down and I'm super hyper-focused. Mm. And for you, and forgive me if some of these questions are just stupid, no. uh, have you been like in a Call of Duty style gunfight? Is that what it's like? Um, it's not Call of Duty style. I mean, uh, you know, there's... <laughs> There's a, I, I don't want to get into comparing the two because they're not, they're right. not comparable at all. No. But have you been in situations where like bullets flying at you, oh. you're given back, like that's, oh yeah when you say For combat, sure. that's, For sure. yeah, like, that's what I'm picturing. Like splitting a door and there's, you know, a uh, couple, well, a long time ago now, um, you know, I'm splitting the door with one of my new guys and I look over and there's, you know, a grenade just bounces off his chest. You know, that kind of stuff. And then there's an AK that comes out the door and, you know, yeah. I mean, that stuff happened routinely. And your heart sure. rate when that's happening is jacked, right? I like, mean, you're, you know, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't remember ever being like, you know, super like having sort of anxiety feeling. But right. um, yeah, you're again, you're just hyper focused. You're hyper focused and you're always looking for the next move. And right. You're always trying to game it. Like, all right, now right. what, you know? And I've heard Julian say things like, yeah, when I'm in there, it was fun. Is it the same for you in 100%. a twisted way? You're 100%. Sick a very fuck. <laughs> 100%. Very twisted. I mean, you know, we come back and like, oh, that was like grenade throwing competition. Go, you know? And we were just going back and forth and hucking grenades through windows. And, you know, I've got, I've got myself on video actually laughing. <laughs> so, yeah. That's we, insane. Yeah. It's, it, it, but it's it, what is it? What's the saying? It's not for the weak, you know, right. the weak hearted. It's true, man. No, it's like not. it's a different breed. They are different seals yeah. are a different breed. Yeah. I, I don't care what you all think, but y'all are crazy. <laughs> I listen. I've read the book of That's David Goggins. Says. I've yeah. read David Goggins' book. I listen mm. to talk. I, I look at Jocko Willenick yep. and follow him. And it's a different, it's a kind different of man. mindset. It's yeah. a different mindset. Granted, like a lot of their mindset align with a lot of things that I look at in my life, 
but they're just they do it to the extreme like Jocko Willenick wakes up at 4:30 every morning to work out. Yeah. I like my sleep. Yeah. But he's like, you don't need to sleep. I usually like the post just so like I get some street cred, but <laughs> I'm really just getting up to pee. <laughs> <laughs> he's walking out into your gym and yeah. snap a selfie. 100%. <laughs> well, are you an early riser? No, I'm not. No. I mean, if I need to, but other than that, I don't, you know, I work for myself, so I get up, you know. When I usually get like? up when the kids get up to go to school. <laughs> Do you have nightmares about the I, past or anything like I that? I don't. I don't. There, there, there are like dreams for you. <laughs> there are certain there are certain times of the year, you know, where I have like very some you know hard dates where I I lost friends or whatever yeah. that I know. You know, other than that, um, you know, every now and then I'll kind of drift off into you know thinking about the good old days and because it was fun. I mean, I had a I had a great time. I miss. Do it. you miss it? I do. I miss it. Yeah. Really. You know? I always get asked that question too, like, so if they asked you to come back, would you? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Really? <laughs> absolutely. But, you know, one of the reasons I left was because of just the, you know, the battlefield was starting to change. And politically, especially. the With rules of engagement? Yeah, ROEs. And, you know, politically, it was getting harder to do our job. And um, really? there was a lot more oversight and, um, you know, a lot more scrutiny. So you and, actually have to think about that. So it's like, it's... A, Crazy enough to us that you're in that situation, but you actually have to think like, am I allowed to pull the trigger? Am I allowed to? Yeah, and you know, our our ROEs were a lot, or pretty straight straightforward. I mean, if if it's a threat, then you know you can engage. Um, unlike you know, uh, for example, you know, law enforcement. I mean, their ROEs are very very strict, as you know. I mean, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would probably last about three days as a police officer and right. get fired. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, that's always a consideration. You know, you, you know, it's just as important to know not to pull the triggers as it is to know when to pull it. Mm -hmm. So, man, that's crazy because uh, I, I don't know. I don't think when I'm in that, when I'm performing or doing what I need to do, I don't think I react. So I don't know how you'd be able to follow guidelines and rules and be able to think of that in what a fraction of a second. To know, oh, this isn't good. I should stop. Like that could, that could cost you, right? Yeah, it can. And um, just to go back to the game real quick, there's actually several scenarios in the game that you have to make that moral decision and that split second decision when you go into a room. There's um, a, a level where you go in, and there's you know a woman running across the room into a corner, and you don't know what she's going for. Right. And so there's a lot of that kind of moral. You know, Can you tell me decision. what she's going for so I don't make a mistake? <laughs> Let me know. Should I? It's actually to, you know, we worked on the project so much. It's it's pretty obvious. So I would be a little, I would wouldn't be on the gun so much if you know what I mean. But right. um, but there are, you know, several you know things like that that take place in the game now. In my world, it's the same thing. It was the same thing. You know, they have people running everywhere, and especially women and children. And but they use the women and children as as hundred percent. Right. Yeah. They they you know, unfortunately, the enemy chooses or has chose to fight. You know, with those you know with their family in the house, right. and you know that's not our decision. We're not making that decision. They're making that decision, and it makes it easy on us because like you're making the decision to fight with your family here. You know. So it's not, it's not my, it's not my gig, man. So on your, that's pretty wild by the way. Um, so in the game, when you guys create and do stuff like that, do you guys, uh, like do a bunch of interviews with a different variety of military personnel to kind of get like their, I, I guess, get stories for them so you can incorporate in the game. Cause all of these scenarios have to be some sort of situation that has happened in in war at one point in time. No, they're all all the situations that are made up in the game are all fictitious. They're all none of them are based off actual events. Okay. Um, what we do, so we we work with the narrative team and the script writers to come up with a um, you know a realistic scenario. So they'll start writing like, okay, what? How cool is this? So we'll come in and say, yeah, that's that's pretty realistic. But why don't we change this? So we actually have a lot of dialogue about. Um, the storyline and what actually transpires in the game. So we we just we again we bring that level of authenticity to it. So sometimes, you know, when it first gets down on paper, it's like, whoa, that's that looks like a that's not real. You know, that's mm -hmm. fantasy land. So let's kind of tweak it a little bit. 
So we kind of go back and forth and meet in the middle to where we get um, a product that's fairly realistic. So. so when it comes to you, it's like, is it a very detailed, like, paper? Like, the first time you see your scenario, like, where the lady's running across the the room to go to a corner, mm -hmm. does it come to you in, like, this giant detail? Or I'm looking at, like, Jackass Bam Margera where he's drawing a picture <laughs> and kind of, like, saying, like, oh, this is what we're going to do, and then you got to figure it out. So um, what they do is they'll create uh, the script, and then they'll actually create kind of a generic version of it, like, in obviously in video game world and then from there they'll they can make small changes or we can so we get to see it you know they're like hey what do you think of this and like yeah that looks good or well, i would change this or that or whatever you know tweak it so, so that's why it takes three years to create this this video game because yeah because of... there's you know there's so many as you know there's so many levels so yeah. we'll start off with um what they call a green screen which is basically the kind of the the first level to sell it to the studio like hey this is the game we want to make and they get boom yeah it looks good continue and then they just they have teams just working on level after level after level and and obviously as you know there's a storyline there and the whole thing so characters that that you um you know you learn and you know you get comfortable with them during the game right um so you kind of get you know you kind of feel your you feel their pain or whatever yeah. You know, because it's uh, it's not it's not necessarily good guys and bad guys. It's basically just different um, different factions or military groups that are fighting for their own cause. You know, it's not like it's not necessarily black and white. And this right. game is certainly not black and white. There's a lot of gray in it. So. How have they not done a Call of Duty movie yet? Oh, interesting. So you should mad. say I'll that. I'll be so mad if you guys do that. You guys try to go with like Gamer with uh, Gerard Butler. Don't get me wrong. I like it, but don't don't make don't make video games into movies. Come I want on. it. Come on. No, we need it. You no. know, it's funny because uh, it's it was a it was something that Activision was um, not Activision. So there was a studio who I will not name okay. um, that was interested in doing a Call of Duty movies Paramount. like a Fox. Like, like uh, three, Universal. like <laughs> literally, they wanted to do back to back, like boom, boom, boom. Didn't they even phase them. Three in a room. And um, so we started reading scripts, and uh, it just it, it kind of flamed out. And I Damn. think it was it was a really hard. I think it's a hard transition to do. Yeah, I really do. It's I agree because you know the the gamers out there they you know they want to control what they're doing. And if you watch a Call That's of Duty movie, it's going to have one outcome, right? And you're you can't control it. So I I personally. Um, I, I mean, I hope it happens just because it's, it'll be good for us, for right. our company, six shooters, but, um, I don't know. We'll have to see. Look, I'll be honest. So when I was I, growing up, I played video games. All I did, I even played Tomb Raider. I know. Loved Laura Croft <laughs> and she was awesome. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, we're going to make this movie with Angelina Jolie. The very first thing in my head was like, no, I don't, I don't want this. Same thing with Resident Evil. Like, they make these movies, and you can't control that type of deal, that outcome. I didn't like it. it. It wasn't the same as a movie. You have to create something different to make it a movie. So then it spins off and does its own deal, but when you play the video game, it's like almost the same equivalent of if you read the book first of Harry Potter and then watch Harry Potter, you don't have the same respect of the movie. And I think it's just, it will be like a money grab in my point of view of like, oh, if you make Call of Duty. Call of Duty is... Literally, what the game is is for live, like live play, you know, just like mm -hmm. Fortnite. You can't make a Fortnite movie, you know. You don't, like you said, you don't have control. Now, the the gamer, the movie, the gamer with Jared Butler, it was interesting. It was awesome because it was essentially a kid playing Gerard Butler running through the game in a Call of Duty style version. It was a real life scenario where he controlled a real human, and he was battling against other humans. And if they didn't make it. They didn't make it. You know what I mean? And it just went through there and trying to take over. It was a good, interesting movie. About a six stars out of ten for me. But I don't think I don't think you can make a Call of Duty movie. I like the Julian Marquez movie review right here. I love. <laughs> look, it's good. He gave it a rating even. Oh, totally. I love it. I love it. But I mean, would be cool is if you like made a Netflix series 
like the now black you're mirroring. talking you have the black mirror and you know how like they had that movie where you can sit there and exactly. do this option and do that option now that would be cool because again i will have control and then you have this series where you can either make it uh a nine minute movie or a nine minute scenario uh, scenario mm-hmm. or you can make it three four hours long depending on if you're going to pick up the pencil or drink the water whatever mm-hmm. it may do so i think that would be that would be intriguing but a movie how do you feel about movies about war like like lone survivor or platoon or uh saving private ryan can you watch those or do you no. just you no. laugh at no. it right I, you know my um my business partner mitch he's worked he worked on lone survivor he worked on um uh zero dark 30 and i i personally don't particularly care for him um you know because at the end of the day when a production company wants to make a movie about something it's all about the entertainment value so when that happens typically you lose a lot of that authenticity because unfortunately you know the real world sometimes just you know like if i describe the situation to somebody for example and we're making a movie or a tv show about it I'm like well this is this is what exactly what would happen for real they're like, well, that kind of doesn't really sound as sexy as I thought it would. And so they want to add a little bit of, you know, a drama. Like, can we actually make this guy, like, shoot full auto instead of just taking single shots? Which, that's what happens in movies. They want to dramatize it, right? So all these movies that are made about war, that's exactly what happens. So when you see the movie, for example, Lone Survivor, you're not really seeing the real story. And that's just, that's just the, the nature of the beast. That's entertainment. Is it? Do you view it as almost disrespectful uh, to you? Like, like, he, di- like, is it disrespectful in a way? Like, you really need eighty bullets flying through the air when it was just two shots or it, one it's, shot? It's like, just, um, it's hard to watch. Number one, um, number two, it's, it's. Uh, I don't know if I'd say disrespectful, but it's. Almost, I guess, bordering on that. Right, bordering on that. I don't, like what I did wasn't good enough. You, you have to sensationalize yeah, it that, over the top. That particular movie, I think, should have never been made, personally. But, um, but you know, here's the thing: like, if a production, a studio picks up a, picks something up like that, especially something a real story, I mean, it's gonna get made. So, our like kind of our vision of it is like, well, if this is gonna get made and they're actually going to really do it, then why not be involved and try to make it as authentic and real as possible? So instead of just standing back and saying, ah, oh, that movie sucks, like, why not try to get involved and, um, and try to make it as real as possible and, and, um, and do things right and make it look right and make the gear look right? Because that's, that's just such a pet peeve of mine. It always has been, even before I was in the military. I mean, I was very, you know, I was into the military. I was in the, the Army guy and all that stuff when I was a little kid, and... You know, I would just watch some movies. I'm like, man, that doesn't even look real, mm-hmm. you know. But um, but that's what our company brings to the table. So, um, you know, we did the TV show two, two, uh, two seasons of six. Um, so we did that. And that was one of those things is like, listen, this is going to get made. And uh, it was really sensitive to come onto that project um, with Mitch and I. And, um, you know, during, I was like, well, he's like, listen, man, this is going to get made. We either need to. You can jump in here and make it look really cool or back out and God right. knows what it's going to look like. How you do know? you separate yourself from that? Like, cause that, that has to be some sort of like an emotional attachment. Cause you know, like, I, like you say, I've had friends that hate war movies because they're like, man, this guy's firing a fully automatic next to him and he's not even flinching or covering his ears. But then he walks over and has a conversation. He's like, it doesn't make sense when it comes to that. So he hates them. How do you separate that to where you have to work on a movie knowing that it's going to be more popularized and, and more changed towards a theatrical standpoint? We uh, so what we do is we um, we call it choose your battles basically. So if there's something that's completely you know off, for example, you know we'll we'll step in and say, listen, this is this is a no go. And some things you know we'll kind of let slide. Um, and just, they listen to you when, they, when you say it's they a no-go. They do. They do. They do. And a lot of the stuff can be, you know, completely, we can take care of it early on when we're just going through the script. Um, just the language and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, how the guys talk to each other, how they interact, what their gear looks like, um, the weapons look like. So a lot of the stuff, if we're involved early on in the show, 
then we have a lot of creative control to kind of dictate what happens um, to so we can alleviate that kind of stuff. Like, well, how's the guy shoot right next to me, for example, that, you know, um, well, it's because he has Peltors on, and that's exactly what, <clears throat> what we used. And you can actually have a conversation just like we are right now when the guy next to you is shooting because you have basically headphones on, essentially, and you're talking through your radio. Wow. So that that's real. So that's the kind of stuff that we we give to them to make it realistic. Right. Has there been times where you have to threaten to walk off a set because they just won't comply and it's just... No. No. No, no. Usually when we get hired on to do a project, we come in and they, you know, they know our background, their resumes and stuff. So there's definitely a lot of uh, mutual respect um, and they, they listen. Yeah. So... On the business side, and I'm not asking for the number, but like, how do you figure out pricing for what you do? That was really difficult. Consult? Like when I first started my own company doing this stuff, I was I literally was calling friends of mine that I had met in L.A. and I'm like, wow, what, what, what's the what charge? They what they charge? Right. Yeah, what's going on? You know, so they gave me kind of a, a ballpark, you know, number. But over time, it's um, you know, you just go off. There's an industry standard. Um, of what you know, guys make or daily rate or got it or a weekly rate. So you know, and over time, you know, once you establish yourself and you get a reputation and you've worked on a, you know several projects and you can kind of you know you know what you're worth. Um, mm -hmm. So and we're now we're actually able to pick and choose. You know, we have a project that just kind of popped up, and um, we're like, yeah, it's kind of it's very controversial. Um, but we're kind of very, we're kind of on the fence about it because of, of just the controversy. And it's, it happens to deal with, um, a guy in our, you know, in our work, in our Got line it. of work there. So, um, but that's the kind of stuff that, you know, you kind of, you can either grab it, you know, you have to know like, okay, your name's going to be attached to this project at the end of the day. So, um, Choose yeah. your battles. Exactly. <laughs> Choose your Speaking battles. Speaking of battles, do you have to get out of here? Or No, we're going to be late. It's all right. I love it. Julian Marquez, we're, extended yeah. stay on the Action <laughs> Junkies. We're, uh, I knew you, you'd you be sucked in. I, I knew was. it. He, he got me, man. You like that? I gave you it before um, we started. Like, yeah, you can get out of here at 630. We'll just keep going. I knew, I knew, well, you were going I knew at the beginning it was going to be a long one, and then <clears> your story is getting... I, I'm, I'm drawn into it. I'm like questioning everything. Like, dang, dude, how, how do you do this? And how do you sit there and pick? Like you're saying, you have a controversial deal with somebody that's inside of your your group or your no, your, I wouldn't say group, but your um, line of work. It's like, man, that right there. Do you reach out to that person and talk to him? Like, hey, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Um, but, but it's one of those deals, like where they're going to make this. You know, it's going to happen with or without you, with or without. Yeah. So, but at this point, it's kind of like, well, just go, <laughs> just go make it. Well, you know. Maybe we'll we'll right. see we'll see. So, hmm. is most of the back to combat? I'm obsessed with combat. So, uh, is a lot of it hand to hand? No, no, no. Rarely ever. Uh, oh no, no. There are in instances for sure where you're you know you're you're putting your hands on people, um, but more times than not, it's you know, I mean that's why we carry guns. Right. So there's there's no need for it, you know. There's no need for knives and all that other uh, nonsense. So, did you read the book Lone Survivor? Did would you did read not. it? No, no. I did not. It? I I I I know the guy, so I I know the real story. So, oh. yeah, yeah. You would probably piss you off. I'm wanting to, to probe into that, but <laughs> I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably piss you off if you actually like. If you read the book or you're getting probably irritated, you watching the movie, seeing all that. Because there's a lot of comments on, uh, like, online of people saying, like, that's not how it was. Uh, was compared it, to the book? Com well, com compared to the actual story. Okay. And uh, what was it? Jesse Ventura? Is that what it was? Um, is that the guy that said that uh, a lot of people were talking down on him and, like, his role and um, what he wrote about the book, because he was one of the guys that wrote, brought the book up, and a lot of people didn't like it. There Are you talking a, about Marcus Luttrell? Who was it? Yeah, Lone Survivor no. was Marcus Luttrell, but you mean what Jesse Ventura had to say about Yeah, but it? I was thinking about, I, I, I went completely You crossed your stories? With, okay. I went with the one with Chris Kyle. The, oh, what's oh, that oh, movie? The Sniper. Sniper. Yeah, mm -hmm. America, it was American, American Sniper. American Sniper, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's Chris Kyle. Um, but like that, and I just know on that one, because I read a lot of stuff, there's a lot of people that didn't like how the story was put out portrayed and how everything was and like it was they said it was glamored up 
more than it was an actual story. And then, uh, again, Jesse Ventura commented something and a lot of people were just not happy with it. Mm. Um, is that like what your type of stake would it be like? You just... I didn't see American Sniper. Um, although I knew Chris Kyle, I knew his reputation and the teams. Um, you know, very good sniper, obviously very good operator. Um, tragic the way it, his life ended. Yeah. Um, as you know, and uh, but I, I didn't see the movie because I knew I knew it wouldn't his story wouldn't be portrayed as mm. realistic so, as it should have been. Frustrating for you? Yeah, it is. It is. And um, same thing with Lone Survivor. Yeah, same thing with Lone Survivor. Um, you know, it's just glamorized, and you know, I even hate to say this, but uh, you know that story. That lone survivor story was very embarrassing to the SEAL teams. It was. It was even a, the book. Not necessarily the book, but okay. just the event. So the actual event that went down was, you know, it was an embarrassment. You know, we, um, we those guys went in there. They lost three guys, and then the QRF bird gets shot out of the sky in broad right. daylight, and we lose another. You That's know, it's the largest loss guys. of I mean, life in yeah. SEAL history, right? Yeah. 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 In one single day, for sure. Um, you lost a lot of friends. In yeah. That? Not yeah. not on that one, okay. um, but yeah, I lost a lot of friends over the you know ten plus years I was over there. Um, but it it was it wasn't it wasn't anything to be celebrated for sure, and certainly not um, not something not a story that needed to be told in my opinion. I mean, there's my my own business partner would probably disagree because he worked on the project, but right. but you know again he you know he went in there to work on it to make it try to look um, you know as authentic as possible. So. Do you think that like these are just an d just ways for people to kind of understand like civilian styles to understand what's going on over there how like how things are really happening over there and listening to stories of like how people are being treated and how they feel inside I guess like help out with like PTSD help out with a little bit of like more respect towards our military and more respect towards like the amount of time you guys take over cuz 10 years is a long time and all the stuff that you've seen during that time and all the people that you've lost, like most people don't really comprehend that. Um, do you think that these movies are what's going to help give them a little bit more of an insight, more of a bit sympathy, uh, sympathy yeah, towards it? Yeah, and it will. And, you know, the one big takeaway and, you know, the big takeaway from um, Lone Survivor was that, you know, that moral decision the, the operator had to make when right. they had those two, two the, the goat, people there. The, right. The kid and the, um, you know, when they had those guys and they knew they were compromised, you know, they had to make this moral decision, like, what do we do with them? Um, so that was the big takeaway for that movie. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that that was, that seemed to me, um, I actually did see that movie. Um, that seemed to me that was the big focus of that entire movie. So, but but that that actually happens. And, you know, there was, there's more than one way to skin a cat and there's certainly more there's several different ways they could have handled that situation um, and got out of their life. So there was one part in the book. Um, I don't think they put this in the movie, but in the book in Lone Survivor that I read that book twice because I was just fascinated with that whole story. Um, Marcus got blown up essentially. And it, he had said his, his pants were blown off and he was like at the bottom of it blew him. You know, he fell down the hill, whatever, a bunch of times broke his back, whatever, mm -hmm. and was like in his underwear. Is that, that really can happen? The force of that? Absolutely. Yeah. That stuff is, uh, you know, explosives are very, very powerful for sure. So crazy. You know, you've heard about people being in accidents and their shoes fly off. Yeah. Yeah. That's just an accident. I right? was in an accident once and I pissed my pants. <laughs> that's about as, it's about as <laughs> legit as it's gone. I'm being honest. Man. What about? I'm actually glad you brought that up. What about that kind of stuff? Like you're you're out there and like I gotta take a shit. I gotta pee. Like you're still human while you're doing all this crazy shit. Uh, it... I mean, you know, normally you take care of a lot of that stuff before you actually go into the field. But um, one thing you do get really good at is um, being able to piss while you're walking. Really? If you've ever tried that before, yeah. That's a, that's a skill right there. Yeah. Actually, it's funny because the first time I actually learned how to do it, um, it was my first expedition. We did a climbing expedition to Mount McKinley. And you're in a rope team, and you're traveling on the glacier all day. You know, it's moving up and down the glacier as you're climbing, and you can't stop. Like, if you have to take a piss, you can't stop because you got a guy in front of you and a guy in back of you, and you're all attached to a rope. So you just got to, like, work through it, <laughs> you know, and it's it's... 
Probably a, it's very mentally um, challenging to right. do it. Yeah, as you can imagine. <laughs> Try it one time. Go hiking and just like see if you can see if you can just yeah. let it go. I'd yeah. wear a diaper to be honest. At the end of the day, <laughs> right? I'm, not, look, I'm not afraid and I'm not ashamed at any point in time. If I have to go, I have to go. Right. You know, when I got in my wreck, I was like holding. I had to already go to the bathroom. It was the middle of winter, and. I heard a, a little thing that if you pee your pants whenever you do this, you get more money from, <laughs> you know, because you're scared for your life. So I was like, I'll, I took the risk. I've never heard that. Yeah, yeah I took the risk. That's awesome. Didn't work Just, out. Didn't work out. No, no extra money. Didn't work out. I wet my clothes, stained my uh, seat. Yep. Yeah. Genius. <laughs> Did you have leather or cloth? I had cloth. <laughs> it was a good old uh, 1996 green Ford Taurus. Green uh, by choice? I don't know. All right. It was a, it was a, it was a hand-me-down. Green my happens. Brother's. Okay. It was good. Yeah. That thing lasted. It was an incredible Hulk because it went through everything and didn't. Like, I we were in a four-car pileup, and someone hit me from behind. I hit someone, and it was just huge. Yeah. It was on the highway, and all I had to do was... Uh, you know, fix the bumper, and by fixing the bumper, all they need to do is pull it out. It literally was told everything. It ran over railroad ties. Don't ask me that question. It ran over, <laughs> um, or it's been hit by sideways by cars. It's flown in the air. The thing just still powered through. It was, that was probably the best Ford car I've ever had. The thing is durable, and it lasted to, for over 200,000 miles. But it's gone now. No. <laughs> That's a shame. What do you do to replace the adrenaline rush of what you used to do, or can you? Oh yeah, great question. Um, when I retired, and, and you know, I was like, put the guns up. All right, I need to do something else now, and I needed a. I did. It was a. It was a black black hole of, like, what am I going to do now? You know, to fill that fill that spot. So, um, I kind of just built. You know, I had an entire career of skydiving. So I was like, well, I'll start base jumping. So I started base jumping and base jumping is one of those things where like Julian described when, you know, you're standing on the edge of whatever the object you're jumping off of is, you know, there's, you're not thinking about anything else. You're focused. It's so the the clarity, the mental clarity is just, it's incredible. And obviously the rush and the adrenaline and all that. I mean, so I started base jumping, um, started wingsuiting and got, you know, got still doing a lot more climbing. Um, yeah, started, got back on my dirt bike, started racing dirt bikes. Um, yeah, just like uh, Viking, I'm down in Baja too, down there racing. I don't, I don't Iron Man it because that's way too much commitment for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm married with kids, so I can't be down there by myself. But, um, yeah, I got back on the dirt bike, started racing desert down in Baja and, and we just, a uh, buddy of mine, Scotty and I, just friend of uh, Stan's yep. um, and myself. So we just raced the mid 400 uh, back in April. So, yeah. So that's what I do. I kind of use all those activities to fill those fill those spaces. Were you married when you were active? I was. Wow. So that must have been tough for her, right? It was. Um, I'm newly married now. Okay. Um, on. So when I, right after, literally right after I retired, um, we separated and divorced. And uh, it was, obviously that's another story, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was, you know, kids and they were very young at the time. So it was uh, not as difficult for sure. Um, when they're that little, they don't remember anything. They don't really even remember being gone. So um, yeah, it wasn't that bad. For me, <laughs> when you uh, when you said you were doing base jumping, now I'm sitting here thinking of every movie possible that has base jumping, triple X, this, that, and the other. Where'd you go base jumping at, and have you done it illegally? Ah, uh, never illegally. He's not going to incriminate illegal. himself. I don't do illegal things um, <laughs> that I can talk about. But uh, um, no, I started. I learned how up at Twin Falls, the bridge up there, in, in um, I don't. And you just uh, jump off that bridge. Yeah, and just... yeah, it's legal all day long, all day long. Um, Scared when you do it or no? Oh yeah, I'm trying totally. to find fear out totally. of you. I want oh, yeah, you, you are. Oh yeah, it's you're, it's it's pumpy. You're yeah, jumping. It's your, 
to the ground with hopes it's, that a chute would open up. I'm it's, pretty sure um, you yeah, so it's pretty pumpy. Yeah, like for sure. that's more nerve wracking for you in a sick, twisted way than combat. Yeah, yeah, you're a sick is. bastard. It you is. are it's a sick man. You never ju- have you ever jumped <laughs> no, out of a plane? No, Julian. No, I'm welching on a bet. I'm supposed to jump out of a plane because Conor McGregor. Uh, really? Lost to Khabib, and I I thought I could do it. You can't. Why don't you come do it with me? Fuck, You're dude. Dying. I I do. I I work part time at Go Jump Las Vegas. <sighs> Is that so, the one out over that way? It's out here in Gene. Yeah. Is that a? Let's go, John. Oh man, dude, that's, a, that's the easy. only one out here, right? It no, there's uh. There's Scott of Las Vegas is up in Boulder City, but Go Jump is okay. that's where I, I I do part-time work out there when I'm in town. I jumped out of uh Scott of Las Vegas, that's what it was. I went and did okay. my first jump tangent. Okay. And uh that is is the best thing. I want to get certified. I want to get my own jump. I want to jump on my own. I think it's amazing. It's the most thrilling That's what I do. Ever. That's what I do mostly now is I take students up. I got to stop having crazy people on the show. It just doesn't work <laughs> out for me. It doesn't work out for me. You just got to man up and just jump out of a plane like I need people on the show that are afraid to park in the fucking red zone, okay? That's what I need. I need Adam Lieberman. That's what I need. You need to rename your show then. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Action Junkies. Anti-Action Junkies should be the name of this program. That would be a great one. So he lost that same bet to me, and he had to eat a, a... a ridiculously spicy uh, chip. You know what? I just watched that. You did? Yeah. Oh, you were doing you a little action that? junkie homework? Yeah. 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 So, so you yeah. eat that ridiculous. Yeah, Dude, how, he gets me into this crazy shit. How was that? You don't understand? I hate black pepper. That's my spice tolerance. Okay. Oh, I don't shit. do spicy ever. It looked. I'd never even heard of that thing before. It was terrible. Oh, Steve, terrible. So when you he, walked off stage, I was like, oh, that's serious. And it's terrible <laughs> twice, if you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> it's terrible on the the exit wound, if you oh will. My God. And I, yes. did it, I did it absolutely like kind. I didn't even go harsh. Because if I wanted to be harsh, I would be like, hey, you can't have any water. I would have died. Or if you can only have water. Because if you... If you the eat water a hot chip cut it, and you dude. drink water, it's like adding gas onto a fire. 100%. It just, it's worse. Wow. So I let him have everything. He brought Pepto Bismol. Yeah, he brought so you had a whole yeah. Yeah, milk I had it all. And, what was yeah. in the plastic bag? Sugar. Sugar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Didn't, sugar was no, didn't. didn't help. And the peanut butter was the worst. Like, that did not help. None of it helped. Oh I really, you know, I watched a lot of videos of that. Like, I saw Shaq do it, all these other famous people do it. And it seemed to like they they chew 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 and then like it was delayed. They were like, oh, it's not that bad. And then a delayed reaction, and then, and then holy wham, shit! Yeah. So that's what I was prepared prepared for in my head. Honestly, the first fucking bite, I was like, oh my god. Then when I tried to swallow it, it like dried up all my saliva and it stuck to the roof of my mouth. And I was <laughs> oh, like, wow. oh my god. And then I was just drinking. It was terrible. It was the worst day ever. Worst Dude, day ever. Hilarious. <laughs> Is there only one that one chip in there? Is that yeah. That's just all one? they need. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awful. <laughs> so I actually tried to make another bet with them. Like, hey. Like, and I should have done this. it because I would have won. He should have done it. So like, I made a bet with them. And this was like uh, maybe a month ago. I was like, okay. It was like, you pick a team to win the series, I'll pick a team. I was like, the New York uh, Yankees are going to win the series. Mm. And if they don't make it and say the Nats don't make it, then we're off. Because he was picking the Nats. No, I was picking the Astros. He was picking the Astros. Yeah. I was like, they have no shot at beating the Astros. I don't know why I didn't take him up on it. He's just battling it. He's just (laughs) battling it because he was more afraid of the fact that I was eating that chip. I was (laughs) like, I I know I can't do it again. I know I can't do it. I'm already like in the self proclaimed Spice Hall of Fame for doing it, Mm -hmm. and I'm out. Yeah, I'm walking out on top. I got the belt. I won the fucking bell. I'm not, I'm not defending it. Yeah. I don't need to you defend don't need to that go belt. Back to that. Fuck that. Bell. I think I think it was hilarious. But like this one, I would have did it way different. But like, hey, you can only have water because that would have been even funnier. Because it was I hilarious. It. it was hilarious mm. on its fact yeah, of just watching some. him. Literally scrimmage on the... He had pepto bismol. <laughs> like, come on. You just had medicine on here. You had peanut butter and jelly, which you thought was going to work. You yeah. had a packet of salt. Yeah. You had sugar. everything yeah. that you needed. Oh, yeah, sugar. Yeah, yeah. You did everything you need, and it didn't help you. No, it was that terrible. Was, it was terrible. Wow. Yeah, it looked then, rough. Yeah, and, then, and then me and the pint-sized warrior, my girlfriend is f- 4'11 and a half. She claims five feet, but mm. she's not. <laughs> and uh, we went to the... Afterwards, we went to eat because I was hungry, you know? And uh, we went to the Black Bear Diner over there on the Las Vegas Boulevard. That sounds pancakes. Rough. I was like, I want pancakes and like figure it would coat the stomach mm. and whatever. <laughs> and uh, like I took one bite of pancakes and then I was like, I'll be right back. And I was in the yeah, I was in the bathroom. Oh really? Black wow. Bear for a good forty five minutes. She Jeez. ate by herself. Yeah. It was wow. terrible. Terrible day. It's a great spot to leave your, your girl. <laughs> the Black Bear yeah. Diner by Unsupervised herself. Unsupervised at the Black Bear Diner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was terrible. Would you ever eat a chip like that? <clears throat> I don't think so, no. Do you like no. spicy food? I stuff? do. I love spicy food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like, I'll, I'll throw, you know, I'll be 
grilling whatever and i'll usually throw a couple jalapenos on there grilled jalapenos and have that with dinner but um i don't really i don't want to torture myself any more than i already do <laughs> so yeah it sounds so weird coming from you <laughs> I don't that's know, where I you draw the line, huh? <laughs> that's as daredevil it's as you spicy get. Spicy food, yeah. that's right. Spice, that's spicy it. food. Oh, I'll back you on that. If you throw some jalapenos on your grilled steak all day, how do you cook your steak, though? Um, medium, very medium. Okay, thank yeah. you, thank yeah. you. If you're about to say like medium well, I'd have been no, like, no, no, hey, no, buddy, no, 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 no. That's not steak. Like. That's just charcoal. <laughs> when you're in the field in combat, not in actual combat, but when you're out there, you have little snacks. You got little peanuts and shit. <laughs> what do you have? Yeah, you got snacks. Totally. Totally. Uh, for a long time, I was on a, just eating Zone Bars. Really? Yeah. A what? Zone Bar. What is that? It's yeah. like, you know, those like little a, yummy little... Power Bar, like an inch, you know. Oh, yeah. No? Zone Bar? I, no? I don't think I... I'd, no. Pint size I might have them. seen them, yeah. but I don't, I don't know. You keep, you know, two or three of them in your pocket, and, you know, other than that, I, I can usually go a long time without eating. That's wild. Yeah. And you're worried about, like, do you eat? You have to worry about like being quiet, like when you're unwrapping it. No, or no, no, they're far so, away. No, typically we would, you know, we would come in from you know eight, nine kilometers away. So we'd, you know, patrol through the desert and stuff. So it'd be, you know, time. Yep, you know, get a couple snacks down, and then after it's all over, hang out a little while. You know, while we're doing cleanup there, waiting to leave, and you know, have time clean for cleanup. Walk me through cleanup. <laughs> <laughs> Cleanup well, you know, sounds after, like you know, code for some serious after, shit. After you know, after everything's over, you know, we kind of gotta go through there and you know do a little uh, housekeeping, you know, if you will. Yeah, exactly. See who's who in the zoo, and uh, you know <laughs> what we can find on whoever, and yeah, get That's the hell wild. out of there. So you know, we were actually required to do uh, an actual you know search and look people over and you know we we're there for a specific reason obviously you just weren't there to to get one target if right you will. yeah you know typically if we showed up at your front door you know there was a reason why so um you know we were very uh specific Is... we had a very specific target we were going after and we just weren't running around for no reason is there ever a conversation with the target like does that ever happen no never no because i don't Neither, none of us really speak Farsi or Pashtun, so. Got it. Or Arabic. So, yeah. That's wild. So you didn't, because uh, like me, I'm I'm super intrigued with learning different languages. Like I, I want to learn Russian right now. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do on Duolingo, which is absolutely horrible. What's Duolingo? Like it's an just, app? Yeah, it's an app that you can just <laughs> learn different languages. But like, it's like, it's like Rosetta Stone to the simplest form. Mm. Um but it never intrigued you to like try to learn different languages while you're out there. Like... Uh, not really intrigued. I mean, it was we had purposeful um, certain commands we had we learned in Pashtun for sure. You know, like just commands if we're telling somebody to you move over there or come to me or you know put your hands up or whatever. We had certain commands, but other than that, it was um, you know we didn't really we weren't we weren't having a conversation. We're not having conversations. We're way past conversations. <laughs> you know Fair I mean? enough. So, that yeah. makes perfect sense. How soon after you retired did you start Six Shooter? Six Shooters, we started about three years ago, maybe three and a half years ago. And you retired when? 2013. Okay. The summer. And so when you first retired, did you go through a period of like, now what? What do I do? No, because I started um, Tier 1 Global um, about three years. I started clearing. Tier One Global three years before I retired. And what did the, what does that company so focus on? So we do that company. It's just myself. Um, it's mainly we do training. So oh. uh, a lot of jumping um, with military units. Um, we do shooting, climbing, expeditions, um, all all sorts of stuff. So, and then I'd had that up and running for a while. And then um, my buddy and I was also with Tier One Global was also doing stuff my first show i ever worked on was man of steel and that was with tier one so went in on that show um worked on that with Zack snyder and then did um batman versus superman right after that mm -hmm. um and then my buddy mitch was doing the same thing kind of on his own and then he got brought in on a project and he's like hey let's team up on this so we started working together and like dude why don't we just come up with our own company and do this on our you know on our own, or together, rather. Yeah, so. that's sick. You, you're you doing all the, the DC movies? 
You're you're setting up on that. Oh man, you go to the premieres. I love it. Yeah, is yeah, it fun? They're fun. Yeah, they're cool. You like right the Hollywood there. scene? Like, is it you is know, it fun? At first, it was very uncomfortable for me. Obviously, coming out of my world into right. that world, it was like whoa, because it's like where bullshit, am right? I? Like, where am I? You know. And, um, you know, people walking around with a tray on, on set and <laughs> passing out lattes. And, I mean, I look like, dude, like, this is awesome. I, I can dig this. This is so, what you people call work? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Come on to a movie set. And it's like, is anything happening right now? Right. I feel like nobody's working. But um, so it was really intriguing um, to work on that kind of in that environment. So, uh, but, I, you know, it's. Now I'm kind of used to it, and now there's a there's a big difference between, for example, if you're on set on a TV show versus a um, movie or film, you know, or a video game. It's it's they're all completely different worlds. So, but, but the plate that plate they're passing around and the lattes you're drinking, they still taste the same. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get into that. I need I need some yeah, of that. Yeah, it's life. good. It's it's good. It's it's a lot of fun, and it's um it's challenging too. It really is. It's it's challenging. So all. Everything about it, you know, from cause you, we usually, you know, they'll send us a script and we'll start reading the script and then we're talking to the script writers and then next thing you're on set. And, you know, we take um, one thing Mitch and I do is we take one of our staples is we if it's especially if it's an action film, we want to we take the actors out to a live range and shoot with them, mm. which nobody really does um, just because it's it's difficult to do. Um, just f- well, from an insurance point of view and depending on what studio you're working with. But the payoff is huge because if you have an actor that's never really shot a gun before and even though they're actors, like, okay, make this look real, if they've never shot a real gun before, they they're do like, it, right. they have no idea. Keanu does that, right? He goes out and he goes to he a does. Terran Tactical yeah, or something. Yeah, do you know yeah. those guys? I, yeah, I know yeah. Terran Tactical. Matter of fact, matter of fact uh, we took a handful of the Call of Duty staff Mm. to that same range and shot with them for two days. And we just took them through, you know, probably 20 different types of weapon systems, you know, from sniper rifles to saw machine guns to, I mean, everything. And we took the game creators that are actually sitting there making these guns look real. And we got them out to a range and like, this is what it really feels like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. You know what I mean? How funny was that? That was funny. That has to be funny. Yeah, it was uh, interesting because... You know, coming from my world, you know, you're like, okay, you're a game creator. That's cool. But, and your job is to build guns, but you don't shoot them. So it was, <laughs> it was kind of an interesting right. dynamic, you know. And so anyway, so we got them out there and they, you know, kind of some of the guys, you know, making a little nervous, like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Like, yeah. you know, but at the end of the day, every single one of them are like, man, this is really cool. This is awesome. And they got a lot of good feedback out of it. And they were taking videos of it, obviously, and all the, um, just watching the reaction, the gun and the, the flash and the kick and everything. So it was very, uh, super beneficial for them. Yeah. Uh, that would be pretty funny. Cause, yeah. uh, I know what it was like for me shooting a gun the first time when I was 10 years old, I can only imagine someone that's behind a desk. That's super intelligent. That can create these amazing platforms to mm-hmm. pick up a gun and literally feel that power. Yeah, that would just be wild. Especially you're telling you got a the saw. They're yeah. sitting there unloading yeah. hundreds of rounds. I per just minute. shot the saw about two months ago. Did Pine you? Size's uh, cousin was in town, and we went over to Range Seven Hundred Two. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that was intense, man. Like you really f- get an understanding of the carnage that that's capable oh, of. For sure, fast yeah, for sure. Interesting story. So we're on the range. Um, the first we did a couple iterations of this with uh, some of the game creators. So we went out to the one of the ranges. Um, out in the out in the mountains there, and we we're on the range. And one of the guys, it's his job is to create kind of the 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 hands. So he was he's like, dude, I like your hands. That's that's really cool. I like the way your hands look. And I was like, uh, <laughs> where's this going? This is getting it's about to get weird. I know I'm, I know I'm in L.A. I know I'm in L.A., dude. But this is this is get weird. So like, well, would you be interested? And in, we want to scan your hands and ha- actually have them in the game as the pl- you know the player. So when you're holding yeah. the gun, you can see the the hand. So that sedgwayed into, they're like, dude, we really like your tattoo. 
Like, can we have your tattoo in the game? So my hands and my right arm are actually in the game. Is that all you want to tell us? <laughs> is, there, is there anything else on there? That's actually all I can tell you. Right. <laughs> now, can you pee down your leg in the... Uh, in the... That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I, funny thing you say, there's a guy at the UFC. Um, his name's Juan. But he's very fascinated with hands. And he'll take he'll take photos of people getting their hands wrapped from champions to beginners, everything. And he has like this entire Instagram account of everyone's hands. And I'm just like, how how do you know what's good hands versus cr- like terrible hands? Right. He goes, you just know. When you know, you know. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> that's wow, that's that's interesting. Wow. It's wild. But like, if you go walk into the UFC Performance Institute, you'll walk in to go check in. You'll look up, and there's a giant pair of hands that are sitting there that are they're like this, like getting wrapped up. Wow. And it was just really, it's, it's really wild that you, mm. I've never met anybody that liked hands that much. And now you just told me there's another. Yeah, there's, apparently there's some people out there that like hands. So I asked Viking Mike this same question. I'm going to ask you based on what you've done in the past as a career. Are you capable of like dinner and a movie or Netflix and chill? Or is it just not enough going on? Like, are you? hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, you know. My weeks um, are pretty loaded up and super busy, so I'm all about, you know, Friday night or whatever night, doesn't really matter, Um, just chilling out, you know, putting on a good Netflix show, Peaky Blinders or something cool, and, um, you know, just relaxing and and chilling out 100%, yeah. What's your favorite TV show? Well, right now it's yeah, it's, it has to be Peaky Blinders. I haven't I haven't got into that yet. Oh, I me neither. Watching. I tried and I turned it off. I couldn't do it. I really? just watched yeah. the boys. Wow. Maybe I need to give it another shot. The boys wow. is what I just recently watched. The, the Righteous Gemstone. Wow. The all time best show though for you is God. I hope you get this right. Best show. Yeah. Mm. See, here's the thing. Favorite show ever. I don't watch TV much at all. Okay. I'm, I'm more of a I'm more of a movie okay. guy. Like, all right, I, but like I a like prime time. That's... Primetime TV? Absolutely not. Right, I agree, I agree. No. But like, you know, what about you're about to hurt his feelings. God, please. he know. I, I bet you he's the same. You've never I'm seen not a, gonna, I know what Game you're of Thrones. You've never seen one. No, I've seen, seen Game of Thrones. I've never seen Game of Thrones. Oh, oh, no. damn! Neither have I. Have I'm you? talking about the yeah, greatest show ever. Oh, man. I've seen Game of Thrones. Yeah. You I'm, stopped watching it too, or did you finish watching it? I actually recently just finished it. Oh yeah, man! Just damn because it. I thought you were one of the cool kids. Nah. I'm going to throw Almost. out a name, and I just, I mean, he's, a, right now, like, you're so high on a pedestal for me, it's crazy, it's almost like <laughs> you've become my hero in this one hour or whatever it is, and I feel like it's all going to go to shit, because you're going to say, I've never seen it, you're going to tell me, just tell me, Steve, you've seen Breaking Bad. Oh, 100%, <sighs> yes. Fuck. That actually, yeah. I that, can breathe. That's probably one of the, that is. Say it, go on, Cranston, preach. Cranston is one of my favorite there actors for sure. All right. For sure, yeah. And that show, right. that was a show that once I started, because I started late. I started late into Breaking Bad. Me too. And I heard all this hype about it. I'm like, what's this all about? So we actually threw it on and I could not, I binge watched the entire Ten seasons? Don't fucking call me. Eight seasons. Don't fucking <laughs> call me. I'm busy. I'll I'll yeah. call you. That's the reason why I don't watch series. I don't watch. So it. you seem Breaking Bad though. I've <laughs> please. Oh, I yes. stopped. I Go. stopped on like get out. I stopped get on out. See, after season one. This what? is the problem. Look, I wanted oh. to get it. Doesn't even get good Look, until after season. Let one. me explain this to you. So I watched. The boys. This is, this is. I just recently watched the boys. I watched the boys within twenty four hours, and there's ten one hour episodes. Right after that, I finished the Righteous Gemstones within the same twenty four hours, and there are uh, twelve episodes that are hour long. I just want you to know that's what I do. Mm-hmm. So I, my goal in life wasn't to be the Jeez, greatest binge Lord. watcher or to know all this stuff. <laughs> my goal in life was to fight in the UFC and become the greatest delete. athlete ever. How do you delete a contact? How do you delete it? <laughs> <laughs> it's right there next to a <laughs> successful man. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I... I Look, this is the thing is I'm super behind everybody when it comes down to it. I've never seen a, a single episode of Game of Thrones. Me neither. And it's not because I don't think it's going to be a good series. It's because I don't know when to stop. 
the same exact reason why you're stating like, oh man, I binged watch 10, eight seasons of Breaking Bad is the reason why I won't pick it back up to watch it. Mm, I can't, please, I can't just, do, just this. do it. It's so fucking you're, no, no, you're like yeah, an addict. It's you terrible. can't stop. It's I don't know when so it's so good. You stop after good. season eight. I'll I tell you when to stop. Stop after fucking season eight. I literally, All right? I'm addicted to people punching me in the face because I love <laughs> That's weird. the rush. Yeah. I love that rush. I love that the, what it gives out. Watching a good series, I cannot stop. I right. literally won't talk to my family. I won't talk to my friends. People start calling me, asking me, hey, man, are you still alive? What's going on? I will miss work. Like, I'll call into work. Hey, guys, I'm sick today. I can't right. show up. <laughs> just to finish what I, I got right. shit to do. Right. I, I, that's why I won't say that. Let me ask you. You just made me think of something. And I might speak for you right now, but if I'm wrong, tell me. Like, we look at you, and with respect, we go, he's fucking crazy. Right? Because oh. of what you've done. Do you look at him and go, wait, you get into a cage and you're going to try to fight some guy? That's your job? You fucking crazy? Do you look at him like he's crazy or are you uh, like, fuck yeah, I get it? I go, I totally get it. You get 100%. Because what, what Julian described, or like at the, when we kicked this thing off yeah. about. You know, being in there and, you know, having that focus and doing that, doing that. I mean, that's exactly, that's what it's all about. Exactly. Right? That's what it's all about. And that's why you do it. And that's the, that's the drug. That's the drug of choice, you know, and we all have that. We have that drug of choice and um, whatever it is, whether it's jumping out of an airplane or jumping into a, a cage with another dude and, you know, going, beating each other's I Whatever it is, yeah. you know, everybody's got their own flavor. So. Yeah, see, I think crazy is a term for people that don't understand it. That's the thing. If you, When you jump out of a plane, you'll understand a, a fraction of what it is. Because when you feel what that is and you feel that rush, that thing that you're afraid of right now, that, that feeling that you get when you think what's going to happen and you go and jump, and that uh, literally it's like two seconds. I wouldn't even say it's two seconds. It's like that one second before the shoot's pulled, you're literally like, holy fuck. Like what is going on? Falling out of a plane? I'm th you, everything rushes through your head, but you can still sense everything. You can feel everything. And since you haven't felt that, you won't. You will look at us after you do that, and you're just like, I get it now. Mm -hmm. I understand. This is what you go through every day. This is what you go through. Like I don't think it's crazy what he does. I think it's fucking amazing. Like, yeah, what he's able. I think to it's do. amazing and crazy together. But I think like, I think crazy man. Like I wouldn't even use crazy because I think. It's not you have to be crazy to do something. You have to be crazy to want to stop whatever you're doing to create a company or to, to go put your neck out to be a company to be a consultant for video games, not knowing that it was gonna lead to that. Mm -hmm. You have to be crazy to give up your entire life to to start a podcast to build it this or to do that. That's crazy to me. Punching someone in the face is supernatural. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I promise you at one point in time in your life, you can say, hey, man, have you ever punched somebody in the face? And your answer is yes. But at one point in time in your life, have you ever said, hey, man, I gave up my job that I was making good money at to start a podcast? You're going to be like, oh, right. oh, what podcast do you mean? Yeah. Like, what, do you, what does that mean? Yeah. That's not, it's not natural. That's crazy. The, the stuff he does, totally normal. It's in our DNA. So, John, when are we going jumping? Man, I don't know. I think we're out of time. I think we're out of time, Steve. We are out of time. <laughs> Ooh, good. That's I perfect. Think, I think I think you have to go jump. Oh, God. I think now that you right have now, I know here, Big Jim. Big Jim, I know you're listening. That's who I made the bet with, and I know he's like, "Fuck yeah, you have to jump." Yeah, he was special forces, or he might wanna, still be special forces. I think forces. the jump would be good. Let's do it before Thanksgiving. Oh, way. fuck off, Julian. Let's do it Thanksgiving oh, before Thanksgiving. God. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I think Thanksgiving is no. a good time. It yep. gives you enough time. I honestly think you should just jump and do it tomorrow so you oh, don't think about it. Dude. But you won't. <laughs> but I need a fucking psyching up period, okay? Yeah, it's good. We're going to do it before Thanksgiving. You guys got it here on Action Junkies today oh, that John is going to finally jump because he has two crazy Why do I people have him on? on. Why do I even have so, him yeah. on? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's set this up. Totally. And we'll get it video. Oh, my God. I'm down. I'm down. What, sure. Do you do? Is it tandem or do you do uh, self pull? Both. I'm not doing self pull. What the fuck? I'm, I'm fucking gripping both. onto him like I a fucking yeah. fucking badger. I don't know. Well, what grips tight. This what is, grips tight. This is know. the roughest part about it all because look at me. I'm you're uncomfortable actually now. Going to be in his lap, so his like his junk is going to be on the lower okay, part of your it's back. Getting weird now, too. Totally yeah, it's getting, getting weird. weird. Totally getting yeah, weird. you're losing <laughs> me. Cool, man. You're, you're losing me. It's all in, dude. You got this. 
Uh, hey, man, it's <sighs> totally cool. He's going to save your life. He's going to scare you for your life, and then he's going to save it at the same time. You're going to have an emotional bond with him. Before Thanksgiving, let's do it. Yep. Julian Marquez, thank you for stopping by the Action Junkie show this week. <laughs> you can find Julian. Well, you, we posted his social media. We posted Steve Sanders' social media and all that shit. Yeah, Dude, thank you. please come back again and we can talk more about this because there's other questions I didn't have the balls to ask you that I definitely need to ask you at some point. All right, absolutely. All right. Yeah. A- after the jump, we can definitely. After have the jump, <laughs> we're going in. We have I have to talk about I have, after that. Yeah, I have questions that definitely we need to address. Cool. Next time. All cool. right. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Action junkies. Let's get to- Action junkies podcast. <laughs>